Hello. I'd like to do a little video here on the Dremel Model 575 right angle attachment, which fits most models of Dremel tools. At least the uh, rotary tools, not their saws and things like that, obviously. This is the second one I've got. This is actually uh, something that I obtained after I had problems with the first one I bought or thought I had problems with and uh, after investigation Dremel sent me this replacement so I didn't buy it outright so I thought I would do this little video about it and kind of cover the things I like about it and maybe some of the things I don't like so much or cover the the issues I had with the first one by the way these typically run about twenty five dollars retail price so here's the 575 mounted on a typical Dremel tool. You can see how that goes on. By loosening this fitting here, the tool can be pulled out slightly and rotated to different positions. One thing you may find with this is that it has this uh, scalloped ring here which mates with a equivalent shape on the 575 itself and there's that square drive shaft inside which has to engage with the square hole in this drive adapter which comes with the 575 by the way and um, if the the square shaft and the square adapter don't line up then it won't go on to this scallop section and it'll like it should go on there but it's not going on and the trick there is to turn the collet slightly oops let's see here to rotate that square shaft a little bit so it lines up with the adapter so now I'm going to try to insert it at the next detent place. It won't go in. So I pull it back ever so slightly, turn the shaft here, and now it goes on. So that's uh, something which they don't mention in their instructions, but which is pretty critical. The first one I had actually had a mismanufactured piece of plastic molding, and even with this trick it wouldn't go on every position. Um, and this is actually the first one I've got in my hands here. I had to fix it slightly. I did a little bit of filing. Um, <clears throat> I believe the other one will probably be fine, but I don't know that till I open up the package. Other people uh, online have not seen any other complaints about it, so I think that was just a one-off problem. But in general, you have to remember to turn this a little bit as you're trying to insert it if it doesn't want to go on in the uh, desired position. This uh, collet nut here which does come with the tool. It's a hybrid one. It's uh, one that can take the traditional uh, Dremel tool collet wrench and it also has knurling on it so you can turn it by hand which most of the time is good enough. Uh, now depending on the Dremel tool you have, some of them have a different way of doing this but I think most people are going to find that in order to tighten this down or break it free when you have tightened it down, you're going to find that uh, you can see there that there's an alignment there where you can lock this collet shaft and the shaft of most Dremel tools will go in that hole and serve to lock it so that you can easily uh, turn this when it's um, tight or when you need to tighten it. And there's a reason for that. You are not supposed to use the shaft lock on the Dremel tool itself to tighten this collet nut. Uh, that will put undue stress on the mechanism and they don't recommend it. They recommend using this lock to tighten this adapter, which does come with the tool by the way, and then use this method for tightening this collet nut. 
Uh, so what you get in here, besides the collet nut itself, you get one standard size Dremel collet that'll fit most of the, the tools. And here's the uh, bare tool itself. And then of course uh, this square shaft adapter. And this uh, scalloped piece and this tightening ring are all parts of it. Now how to get that off, the way that's done is you just stick the tool on find a place where it's happy and then use that tool to um, unscrew that piece which threads right on the front of the Dremel tool like that and then this comes off uh, so this is the universal uh, Dremel mating thread which does go into into here so those are the pieces as they line up. So anyway, the tool seems to be pretty well designed. Um, it's made out of some fairly tough plastic. I don't necessarily think it's fiber reinforced, but it might be. Um, it's not limited by speed, so it should work over the full range of speeds of any uh, model of Dremel tool. Um, and what's inside of here is a gearbox that just makes the right angle in the simplest possible way. And the problem I had with this, and again this is my first one, was it would get piping hot, so hot I could not hold it with my hand. And you do need to hold it with your hand when you're operating the tool. One hand will be holding the tool, and the other hand will be holding this to guide the bit you're working on. Now maybe some things like you're doing some light sawing with a little Dremel saw blade or a cutoff tool or a grinder, maybe you won't have to. But for example, if you put in any of the Dremel milling bits and you're trying to hog out some wood or do some milling like that, um, there's enough side force on this that it'll try to unscrew this part of it from the adapter on the Dremel tool here. and just when you're trying to do something critical it'll suddenly break loose and the the whole tool will flop one way or the other there's no way to lock that so you really need to stabilize the tool here at the 575 right angle adapter with one hand and then uh, hold the rest of the tool with your other hand and if this is too hot to hold then you're gonna have a problem now maybe if you just turn it on briefly for little spurts of operation, but if you're you know grinding away at something for a few minutes, this can get really hot. And I wanted to see why that was. Where is the heat coming from? Obviously it's from friction, because it's not migrating from the tool, and this part of the tool is not as hot as it is up here. So let's take a look what's inside of here. The right angle attachment is held closed with three screws which take a, uh, a T10, there you go, a T10, so it's a, a Torx screwdriver bit, looks like that, and the T10 is the size. Uh, and before you do that you have to pop loose this metal ring, which acts like a, a fourth binder holding the two halves together, and it just snaps on. I'm going to put the camera down here and hope that it's um, shows what I'm trying to do. So it's just necessary to put a small screwdriver in here. That didn't work the way I wanted it to without scratching it up too much. So I'm going to take the other screws out first. Okay, and then when that's done, you can try to pull the case open, but it won't come open because that metal ring is on there.
there we go. I was able to get the screwdriver under it <coughs> and uh, just pop that ring off. It's held by spring tension. There we go. So now that ring is off. And now the uh, tool halves will come apart. What we find inside of here is just that little right angle gearbox like I mentioned with a uh, roller bearing at each end and a roller bearing here and here and then that flexible square shaft is stuck inside of there and it can move up and down a little bit to facilitate alignment with the adapter in the Dremel tool itself. Now um, these just sit in here and you can actually lift them out like that and like that and that's all there is to it. Now I found this seems to have a lot of grease in it but what I found when I opened this one up originally and this is my first one not the second one was that while it had a blob of grease like this in it it was over to the side in a position where it probably wasn't going to get very much grease on the actual gears and the gears themselves seem to be nearly devoid of grease now I think what may happen here is when you run it if you run it at a high speed centrifugal force is kind of blowing the grease off of the the teeth of the gear and it piles up on the outer uh, outer surface of the uh, the gearbox housing here and then how does it get back into the gear teeth when it needs to um, it's a fairly thick grease but it's not that dissimilar from axle grease or something you know it's not very thin or you know its viscosity is pretty high and um, I think it can't be a very thin lube because if it did it would just leak out there's no gasket or anything around here it would just get all over the place so it's a thick enough grease um, that it'll stay put but I have a question about whether it'll get to the gears I mean these gear teeth look like they're totally dry you just can't see any lubrication on them at all so I think what's happening is these gears are sitting here running dry and essentially free of lubricant and because of that there's a lot of friction and they uh, pass that heat to the housing and that's why it's too hot to hold so um, I don't know what to do about that um, it seems to me like it might be a bit of a flaw in the design uh, but you know maybe it's okay maybe there is really enough grease on there but darn if I can see it it looks like a totally dry gear I just dragged a piece of dry paper towel through about half of these slots in this bevel gear and I could see no evidence of any lubrication or wetness on the paper towel. It was like I was dragging it across a dry clean piece of metal. So there's a problem. Um, so what are the options? One thing you could probably do here is uh, when putting this back together is to just pack this thing as full of grease as you possibly can. Uh, like I said, I just there's like a little dollop of grease in the inside of this housing and I've added some grease to it. I actually opened this up and added a little bit of grease and this is what I used. Um, clear synthetic grease, waterproof, blah 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 blah. And I picked it because it had a similar viscosity and characteristic to the factory grease. I thought it wouldn't hurt to have more grease in there so maybe there's no place for it to go and not still have some of it on the gears. You know, kind of like that maybe. Adding some more grease to it and uh, you know I don't know if that'll help or not but maybe it won't hurt. Putting this back together again, I put the adapter on the shaft then I put this locking ring on here then I screw on this mounting adapter 
and uh, to get it tight enough I use the tool itself as a wrench to make sure it's on there good and snug and uh, then get it in the position I want it and tighten this ring down So just to do a bit of a quick demonstration of the tool in operation, uh, and it does get pretty loud when you run it, the gear train is not very, very sophisticated and there's a lot of gear noise and so on. Uh, I'm going to run it at a fairly high RPM to cut through this screw with this Dremel cutoff tool. And just doing that, of course, this doesn't get very warm, but I can already feel a little warmth up in this area. So just in that short amount of time, it's developed enough friction heat to get this area warm. So I'm not sure there's any way to really solve that heating issue. This is the second one. I've taken it out of the package. And right off the bat, I found a small flaw with it that uh, I could not put a Dremel tool shank through the locking hole here because uh, when I looked through I could see it was not uh, lining up properly. The metal shaft was too far in that direction and its hole would not line up with this hole. It was not very far off but it was far enough off that I could not get this in there. So I took a .125 diameter uh, drill bit um, <clears throat> which is a uh, eighth of an inch drill bit and just got it lined up as best as I could and ran it through there Basically what it did is it just took off a hair of plastic going through there, so now the, uh, the piece fits. I'm going to open this one up and see what it looks like inside. Okay, this one has more grease in it than the first one did. The other one had maybe about two-thirds that much grease piled up in the corner, and there was none in evidence anywhere else, and certainly none down here around the gears um, so that's better but I'm going to pack this one with as much grease as I can get in there so I pulled both gear sections out packed the bottom with grease put this part back in packed grease under the bottom of this gear and on its bottom side put this part in and then put more grease on the top and that plus the grease that's in here ought to be about as much as can go in there it shouldn't be any more physical space in that housing. Okay, let's see how this one goes. Well, that should be good. I couldn't really see any harm to having so much grease in there that there's not a iota of air space left. Maybe somebody who's really up on the mechanics of this would say, oh that's bad, there should always be a little extra space, but uh, I'm going to go with this the way it is on both of these 575 adapters. And uh, if I ever decide that I need to let some grease out, they're easy enough to open up and uh, take some back out. Hope you found this useful.